you already know what time it is. It's time for more of The Witcher 3, but a little bit different this time. So uh, if you guys are hip to my Discord server, then you already know what happened. So yesterday, honestly, I recorded that banger of a Witcher episode. As you can see, this is the raw footage of the entire thing. And the thing about it is that when I actually went to go and edit the video, I just didn't have any commentary. I have no idea what happened. I, I noticed something looked strange when the video was encoding when I finished uh, recording, but I kind of just didn't worry about it too much because honestly, I was really hungry after recording and I didn't discover it until later that I just didn't have any commentary. And honestly, I was kind of stumped at what to do. But then I thought about it and said, we're going to do a bit of an abridged episode here. It's going to be way, way shorter than the average part, but it's basically going to be me giving you commentary about what I did during episode 15, because we actually did quite a bit, I feel. So I know the first thing we ended up doing, we uh, were still in Novigrad. We decided to take on the contract called Deadly Delights. Um, essentially, we end up meeting up with a guard and uh turns out an entire night patrol ended up getting slain they have no idea what happened because the corpse just looked kind of crazy um we ended up making our way uh, down to the docks and uh or nearby the docks and we ended up meeting up with the uh medic here and he kind of wasn't really sure what happened to them because he hadn't really seen something like this before it wasn't exactly dehydration but it was something along those lines and uh, in the end, we ended up determining it was a succubus. We uh, traced the scent all the way back down to this hotel and we ended up finding them. Uh, we determined that we weren't going to <laughs> end everything. Um, <laughs> and uh, what was cool about this one in particular, if you remember from past episodes, there was a quest that was kind of like this. It was about a Doppler though uh, the Doppler had been stealing stuff from some of the marketplaces and uh, because we ended up letting them go we ended up not being able to bring back a souvenir to show that we actually took them down so because of that we just didn't get paid you know uh, and that kind of sucked but in the end the Doppler gave us more money than what we would have gotten from killing him so in the end it all worked out but this one was cool because um instead of her paying us she gave us a memento to show that you know she had been dealt with and now she's just going to get out of town so in the end we still got to prove that we took care of them and i like that a lot because they didn't didn't just do the exact same thing they did before and i i brought this up while i was recording because i i really didn't think that was going to happen and i really did like that it goes to show that there's not cookie cutter despite how many quests there are in this game and then we went in and showed proof and it was all good all good and then we ended up deciding to continue on with the uh, main story and we met up with vernon roche which i assumed was a character from a previous game um, based off of how they kind of seem like they have some kind of past together uh, which was cool um he ended up giving us a nice little after a bit of catching up he ended up giving us a nice little bit of lore and stuff with going on with how he ended up in this place what he's doing now and stuff like that and they're essentially i guess kind of guerrilla freedom fighters or in a way um but we ended up tagging along with him again because he was going to be uh handing up his contact for redania and while we thought it was just going to end up being a spy it actually ended up being the king himself king radovid which was really cool because after hearing about him so much and everything like that especially with how uh um other characters have brought up you know how ruthless and stuff he's he is and stuff like that it was honestly i was kind of shocked to see that he kind of looks really young for some reason when i was seeing him i always envisioned more of like a seasoned older man maybe in his 40s to 50s and stuff like that which isn't really older but you know what i mean but to this he he honestly looks like he's in his maybe early 30s late 20s that's how young he looks here to me so it's like honestly he look my age kind of thing <laughs> and um uh, but he is ruthless you can tell really off uh off the cuff that he this guy is not in his right mind 
He is very uh, aggressive. He is delusional. But I think what makes him very interesting here is that I could tell immediately that despite that, he's somebody who wasn't. Um, he's very, very cunning, despite being delusional in the sense of his own mission and stuff. He feels like a character that despite the madness he has going on in, inside, it doesn't make him any less like sharp. He is very good at reading people. He's very good at manipulating and he's very good at using his position to um, to use the people around them for his own benefits. And I, I really like that. It makes for an interesting uh, who I assume will eventually become a more of an antagonist, um, especially with what happens later in the video. Um, he did end up for free giving us the location of Junior and um, he ended up putting him inside a mansion to just kind of do his thing for now. He basically, he, he's not useful anymore, basically. So that's kind of what he ended up doing. And because of that, I was, I was kind of like, oh, that's kind of strange that he's just giving us the location. But in the end, he said it was because just to get uh, Geralt to owe him one which he does come to collect for later in the video. And um, I was kind of surprised that we ended up uh, just getting that for free in the end. Um, this instead of going after Junior immediately first, we did end up going um, ah, back to Vernon Roach afterwards um, because he ended up having some some trouble. Um, one of his apprentices, someone who's also in uh, uh, his guerrilla unit is Vess, a younger girl. She's impulsive, hot tempered, as it says there and stuff. And because in the end, they have to understand that in warfare, you know, people die. Good people die. That's just that's how it is, you know, and they can't always jeopardize the mission to go and save people, because in the end, this is war. They have like when it comes to the mission, the mission cannot be jeopardized, especially when it means accomplishing the mission will save millions of lives in the end. You know, it will save way more lives than that are sacrificed, you know, and if saving these people uh, jeopardizes that mission, then it's not worth it. You know, and Garrett was kind of surprised that uh, Vernon Roche and ended up feeling this way because he always took him as more of an idealist. And in the end, he kind of is, but even he understands that sometimes there's just no other way. But Vess did not really like this perspective, and so she decided to go and help out these people anyway because they had helped him out previously, and she just didn't sit right with her to, uh, it didn't sit right with her to just let them die. And in the end, we ended up helping Vernon Roche, uh, going and finding her, and we took out the Nilfgaardian soldiers and stuff like that. And I noticed midway through the battle, I know you kind of can't see it because of um, my face cam here, but even if I were to move my face cam, my face cam in this video, uh, it, it's not there. <laughs> so like, if I were to go like this, oh, you can't see it. But um, if you, if we were to see it, like it's, it's, it's there, you can't see it from there. But underneath my face cam, there is a, uh, HP bar for Vess, which goes to show that you could actually get her killed here if you, I guess, didn't attract enough attention to end up fighting off the Nif Guardians and stuff like that, which I did not realize until she was practically dead. She was definitely one hit away. And I'm glad I ended up noticing when I did, because honestly, me and Vernon Roche just kind of went in on him in the end. He was kind of his AI was kind of really annoying. He kind of got into this corner here and Vernon Roche, like in like a second, he kind of comes in and uh, really gets in the way. And every time I try to like hit him with a combo or something, it, I can't finish it because the models are pushing him further away. But uh, in the end, we end up beating him. Vess is uh, alive. Um, she gets chewed out by Vernon Roche and stuff like that. She gets really chewed out. And in the end, we decide to not kill, uh, the soul of guardian soldier. Cause I think you actually have the uh, option to disagree with Vernon Roche. Cause he's the one who wants him to live because in the end, he kind of felt that showing that, that they can be merciless and also merciful, you know, shows that they are people too. 
you know, they'll do what they need to be done. Like he did just kill their entire unit, but he also did leave the commander alive, mostly just because he will go back and tell them that they did let me live. They absolutely could have killed me, but they didn't, you know, so. And in the end, while it, it kind of could come back to bite them that, oh, they just reported everything about us and stuff like that. It also kind of gives a bit of a human side to their enemies. So I did like that about Vernon Roche and I did end up agreeing with him. <laughs> so I, I think that was pretty cool. Um, but in the end, we end up finishing that. Um, we fought more of Junior's henchmen and decided to finally go into his hideout. Yes, finally going into Junior's hideout. I feel like we've been kind of following and tailing this guy for a while, and which is cool because he actually brings that up later. He's like, I had to kill a lot of people to get here, man. I had to do twists, turns, go this way and that way, all to freaking find you, man. And I'm telling you, dude, right now, um, it was cool uh, fighting my way through this mansion and stuff like that. Um, it was crazy to, I'm not gonna show a little too much here because uh yeah um <laughs> there was quite a bit of that would have to be censored in this in this moment but basically junior was just like radovid had said he is definitely not good to women like and i don't even mean in you know that way he would actually be killing them and torturing them and stuff like that it was absolutely awful definitely a scum of the earth human being for sure and he, uh, the only reason we went to him was because we had confirmation that he had encountered Siri. And we ended up playing on a flashback um, with Siri, which was cool because ah, we finally get to play a Siri again. I will say, though, this kind of confirmed to me that I, I don't care for playing a Siri as much as I thought I might have. Um, I don't like that you can't heal uh, with her. And that's honestly just I mean, you could just say get good and you know it fair fair good good but again it, it kind of just annoys me too that like i get not being able to get loot or anything like that but why is combat neutered to that point you know i i don't see an actual reason to have her not be able to heal i don't i don't i don't i don't know what the actual reason for that is um but it's fine she actually got a new ability too that uh it's if you've ever played Twilight Princess, Zelda Twilight Princess, I know I'm always comparing this game to Zelda, but I mean, Zelda is the blueprint of every video game at this point. Um, it, it had this move to where uh, she learns his move to where it's like um, when you hold down the I believe it was the right trigger on the controller, um, it activates this energy field. And the longer you hold it, the more people you can, the more uh, the stronger the attack is but she can attack up to five enemies all at once and she'll just boom, zoom, 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 teleport and hit them all. And I love that because uh, obviously uh, in Twilight Princess, you can do the same thing when you're playing as Wolf Link. In that game, you turn Link gets cursed to be able to turn into a, a, a wolf when he goes in Twilight Realm and he ends up getting a move that's the exact same thing as that. You hold down the button and it, it makes this, oh, I hit the mic, my bad. Uh, it, it makes this energy field type thing and then, um, you go and zoom and attack everything. I don't remember in that game if there's actually a limit to how many you could. In this game, they said it does. It's a five enemy limit, um, but I don't remember there being a limit in that game. But then he also boom, boom, boom and hits all the enemies. And I thought, ooh, I love me that. I love the vibes of that. So that was really cool. I definitely died multiple times, though, trying to do this. <laughs> so, so that was uh, kind of annoying, but, you know, it was cool. Uh, but here, Siri ended up was trying to go and save Dudu, and I didn't remember uh, learning about that, but he's actually a Doppler. Um, and again, the reason why Triss and him uh, need Dudu so they can kind of bring him back out of hiding and stuff like that and help them uh, go and save Dandelion. So this was when Siri and uh, Dudu were together. Radovid was torturing him, trying to find out some kind of information, baiting Siri into coming and helping out and stuff. And then we ended up uh, beating up the men. And in the yeah, I, I died multiple times. <laughs> Whoa, hiccup. We died multiple times here. Um, and Dudu ended up turning into uh, uh, Junior in order to get away which was pretty smart and none of his, he was basically just able to walk right out, but we honestly haven't seen him since and there, there's no way to know. And we actually ended up 
uh, getting the option to kill Junior or not. And in my opinion, there was there was no there was no question here that Junior should die. Um, I know it might be a decision that's brought up a lot later, but in my opinion, there's just genuinely no reason to keep this scum alive. You know, and like, there's no way he actually feels bad. He's only doing this now because his power trip is a bit over because he a bigger fish found him. And again, nobody who does this to all these women and stuff like that deserves it, man. I mean, yeah, he could go to jail, but if I'm being honest, this man is already so powerful within Novigrad that, yeah, a lot of it was probably because of uh, King Radovid's backing. But in the end, Radovid, I don't believe actually uh, is in charge of Novigrad. So realistically, he, uh, no, Radovid already said he's kind of out warned his usefulness. So who cares? Who's going to back him now? You know, so I honestly just said, screw him and I finished him off. So I did. I did feel good about that. I didn't mind whatever. Um, right after we left, though, we ended up getting summoned by Radovid and um, he ended up wanting us to pay back that favor of finding Junior. He wants us to go ahead and uh, find Philippa Elhart, um, who was actually a mentor of his when he was younger. And I assume she was also in previous games because Philippa was also brought up um, back when we were talking to the, uh, the other guy. Um, I can't even remember his name off the top of my head, but he was a big part of the last episode. We were helping him try to find uh, Siggy Reuven. That's his new name. Um, uh, I can't remember. It's just something. It starts with a D. But yeah, him. Um, he actually was betrayed by Philippa too, even though they worked together. Um, so he also does not care for Philippa right now. So our biggest quest right now with King Radovid, which we kind of have to do, we couldn't deny it. We couldn't say no, was we have to go and find Philippa, which we didn't end up doing in this episode because there were other things I thought would kind of uh, be a bigger focus. But we learned more about the backstory between these two as well that um, despite being cruel in her punishments and stuff like that, and but generally being a um, a, a decent mentor, um, he did gouge, have her eyes gouged out before, but it's still she still remains extremely um, dangerous because again, she is the one who founded the lodge that Kira actually was part of, which is cool. Um, and we did go ahead and, and read more of their docs and stuff like that, just to kind of learn about this. So. Uh, we learn more about uh, Radovan and his uh, upbringing and stuff about how what happened to King Vizimir. And that was neat. I really enjoyed that. Um, then we kind of were stumped a little bit to try to figure out what we would end up doing next. But we ended up getting a message from Triss, which saying we need to talk to her. But I decided not to do that. It's funny enough. I figured this was because I figured like when you start getting to the end, of these areas because there's not much left to do in Novigrad now in terms of the main quest. Um, this is kind of the secondary story for them, kind of like after you finish the main story thing with Kira, you actually get her um, secondary story. I felt like that'd be kind of a bit more long winded and I'd already been playing for over an hour at this point. So I decided to just put that on the back burner and go and see Priscilla to tell her about what we learned about uh, Dudu, um, which we did end up doing. Um, we ended up finding out that he took Menge's form. Um, well, we want him to take Menge's form um, so we can actually have them order uh, Dandelion move to Oxenford so we can grab him on the way, which is honestly a really good plan, which wouldn't work, of course, would be necessary if we didn't kill Menge. So what we did um, in the end, though, we we need Dudu to reveal himself, though. We need to leave a message somehow that he can kind of get it. So we decide that he uh, it probably best to just put on a play. You know, uh, Dudu is somebody who is a kind of a master of disguise at this point, though. So there's probably a bunch of people, uh, different people he could be and disguise himself as. There's no way he also wouldn't be somewhat nearby a friend, especially on the night of like a special uh, event or stuff like that. He would definitely join but still undercover because again, I'm sure they know who his friends are. They kind of, he kind of wants to stay hidden in order to protect his friends, I assume. So that's why we need to kind of let him know that, hey, we're looking for you. It's all all right, you know, come on out. 
Um, and that's basically what we're going to be doing here. Um, we decided to put on a play about a Witcher who saves a Doppler. And I think that's pretty cool. <laughs> Geralt was somebody who did not realize that would be cool. Um, we end up finding out the troop who mainly put on plays and stuff here um, actually are really indebted to Dudu and Dandelion. So uh, they're more than willing to help, which does happen in due time. Um, thankfully, in the end, Priscilla was a lot better at making some of the ideas for the play. She did come up with it um, and it was checked out by Arena, who is the main stage performer, uh, uh, conductor and stuff that we needed to talk to. Um, so she gave us a little bit of an assignment that we needed to go ahead and uh, hire some some goons who would protect um, the actors and stuff like that, because it's it's the Witcher. You know, these dudes are going to throw bricks and knives at the at the performers if they don't like it or something like that. So we need people, the people to help the actors stay safe there alongside. Um, we needed to get uh, the jugglers uh, from. Um, uh, I can't remember what they were called. Uh, they were a group of people who are really good at um, they're really good at performing and, and letting people know stuff. So if people if things needed to be known, they were the ones to really do it. And I, I like that a lot. Um, but unfortunately, they're also having their own bit of trouble. The landlord has thugs and stuff trying to collect from them when they just don't have any money. It also looks like they're re getting ready to really do some dangerous stuff to them, but they're nothing to Geralt. Uh, I couldn't use delusion because I, I, I still haven't done it yet, <laughs> but we took them uh, down and yeah, that was great. Um, we did end up uh, for some reason we left Novigrad and went in through a different way. We needed a pass to confirm that we weren't a mage. Thankfully, Siggy Reuven came through and got us a pass uh, while we were stuck at the gate because we wouldn't have been able to get back inside. Um, but we made our way to the docks and instead of just paying them, I decided that we were going to fight uh, them. You know, I was going to fight the two, uh, I guess, the strongest guy and the leader of the, the gang or whatever. I fought them at the same time. And if we win, then we basically get their services for free. If we lose, we have to pay them double. And I'm not gonna lie, it, it it did, it was kind of close. Again, I was one real good hit away from dying, but we did end up winning. So he'll guard whatever we want and we got it for free. So that was cool. Um, <laughs> uh, then we went back to Arena to let him know that I did everything. I saved the, the jugglers um, and she gave us actually you know, some options here so for some of the actors um so for the prince we needed to either go with abelard or abelard um he is somebody who's a really good actor but um th a lot of the crowd doesn't really care about him like that you know he's not a fan favorite or anything like that he just does his job and that's fine but the crowd doesn't care about him but maxim is somebody who's a great actor and the crowd loves him but you never know if he's going to show up sober or if he's going to show up at all. And honestly, with as risky as this play is, I just decided to go with Abelard because I, I can't guarantee Maxim would even show up. And if the event of him not showing up or showing up drunk, that would jeopardize the play and the message we're trying to get to do to it's just too important because, again, we're not trying to jeopardize uh, our ability to go and get um, dandelion saved so we went with abelard um we were also able to pick the princess who was going to be playing um so we had the option to pick between priscilla and uh, irina and i feel like it made more sense to pick uh irina mostly uh, it made more sense to pick priscilla mostly just because uh she's Dudu's friend uh, so it, it makes sense that he would want to see a play with her in it but I felt like the most important thing was Geralt being there because there's no way Geralt would be on stage for a play if it wasn't important, especially when he sees that the play is about a witcher saving a Doppler. There's no way there's no way it wouldn't be some kind of message. So I feel like the princess uh, question didn't matter as much, despite despite the princess one seeming like it mattered. So I did go with Arena just because I really like Arena. She's neat. Um, so I went with that. She also said she's just more experienced than Priscilla is. Priscilla may be younger and more beautiful, but like, again, she just has 
talent is talent, bro. You know, at the end of the day, looks are great, but a talent can steal a show. So that's what I went with um, in the end. And she basically said, are we ready to start? And I decided not to, mostly because, again, it, we've already been recording for nearing two hours. So I decided, you know, we're just going to end it there. Uh, thanks, everybody, for watching. And yeah, um, that was a great episode, honestly. And I, again, it really sucks. I couldn't show you all it in the moment because, again, I, I did summarize the whole thing. But it's not it's never the same thing as seeing somebody almost die to a boss in the moment or it's not the same thing as somebody questioning somebody's motives and stuff like that in the moment. You know, like me getting scared, realizing that Vess had an HP bar the entire time. You know, there, there's a whole bunch of stuff, but I, I do think I, I really enjoyed it. There wasn't too much exploration in this episode, um, but I'm still I'm still fine. Honestly, I really loved storming uh, Junior's uh, mansion here. It was really cool fighting all the different kinds of enemies. Uh, and stuff. I had to do my thing here. I'd been trying to weave Axie a little bit in. I I don't know if I actually uh, can find the moment here, but I did uh, say that once I finally I leveled up to level 15 in this episode, and I wanted to uh, essentially uh, once I get this whirlwind, I did finally have enough level up points to put into my character in the red sector. So now on next level up, I can just get whirl. That's an, a move people have been talking about and hyping up for me since the first episode. So I am really excited to finally try it out for myself. But once that's done, man, I'm sorry, but I'm probably going to start leveling up some blue um, character uh, perks and stuff like that. I really, really hate missing these delusion um, skill checks. I, I really hate missing those mostly just because it seems really cool and honestly, probably streamline stuff. I don't end up having to risk a fight. I don't end up having to spend money. It's easier just to just tell somebody to get out of here, you know? So uh, that was it, though. That was mostly what happened. So uh, you guys kind of know my plans. I did get a new crossbow. Um, I did find some new boots and I put uh, Axie, uh, I put Quinn and Axie uh, little uh, thing sigils inside them. So that's the only thing that really changed um, during this time. I mean, I also put on some some real meat on the consumables but again that's basically it but um that's gonna be it from me everybody i hope you guys enjoyed this i'm again i'm sorry i know it's not like the main thing but i still kind of just talked for nearly half an hour <laughs> uh recapping this thing so we did do quite a bit this episode and i and after recording this i do feel kind of better about it because I, if something like this happens, I can always do this again. As long as I have the actual video footage, I can always just explain what happened. And I did go note for note, bar for bar, you know, explaining what happened at each individual moment. You know, we might not have gone minute to minute itself, but in every scenario, I explain what I was thinking, how I felt, um, my theories. And again, because I don't know everything yet, that this is the latest of what I've recorded. I still don't know what happens next after this. I don't know fully what Triss wants. I don't know uh, if Philippa is actually like as bad as people are saying. You know, I, I don't know how the play ends up. So this is all the latest of what I've recorded. But again, if you enjoyed this video and you haven't already, hit the like button for your boy and leave a comment for the algorithm. This episode might really, really need that. You have no idea how much that really helps. And if you want to be notified for when new episodes of The Witcher 3 come out, you, all you got to do is, you know, subscribe to the channel, you know, and hit the notification bell. It does work pretty well. I, I do think that some I think because I took a bit of time off to try to kind of get Patreon all all set up. I, I don't want people to try to check out the Patreon and not see content for them to sub to. If I saw somebody's Patreon, I'd want some good content to binge, you know. So that's kind of why I took a bit of time to back uh, it up. And even then, um. I've been trying to get some videos up. So every time I get a video up, that's one less exclusive to Patreon. And again, it's not really exclusive. They're more timed exclusive. So like, yeah, I'd like I'd like to eventually have three to four episodes of The Witcher 3 ahead on Patreon, just because, again, it's easy to record and then immediately post it to Patreon, then record and then edit for hours and have it render for hours and et cetera. Uh, so. I also think people who financially support the channel should get something in return. I'll never make exclusive content, even if there's like a whole playthrough that's on Patreon, but isn't on YouTube yet. That's only just because 
there's no reason not to back things up. Um, it seems like we're getting to the end of closer to the end of this game um, in terms of main story. There's still a lot of side stuff to do. But as I said, I never intended to do absolutely everything in this game. I'm mostly just doing what interests me and what has fun. And to me, that's even better because now the next time I want to play this game, there's still stuff for me to do. I'm going to tell you right now, if I 100 percent of this game, I'd probably never play it again. You know, I know myself mostly not because the game is bad but because my backlog is really freaking big so if i spend a bunch of time on a game it will probably be many years before i touch it again especially if i'm 100 percenting it like an rpg it's not like i'm doing every single secret level in mario world or something like that or again it'll take me two hours to beat the game again you know it, this is something to where i like if the exact same reason i didn't do everything in skyrim I'd love it gives it makes it more enticing that I can go back. Like, dude, I feel like playing The Witcher 3 again, you know, and I didn't even do this quest last time, dude. That's crazy. I didn't even see this, you know, and it gives me reason to even stream the game after I'm done with it. After the Let's Play is done, I can still stream the game whenever I feel like it because, you know what? I feel like booting up Witcher 3 and, and doing some quests that I didn't do before. You know, I still do plan to do all the DLC, so don't let's let's not. Uh, mistake that once the main story is done i will dive into both dlcs i hear that both dlcs aren't crazy crazy long or anything like that but i do plan on doing the main story and all the dlcs as the bare minimum for sure so you guys have nothing to worry about in that department mass effect definitely seems like it's going to be ending within the next three to four episodes maybe at the very most um i mostly have some side stuff i want to do before really moving on because as far as i'm aware there's only there's probably only like two major things at the at the end of that that game right now i have one last main story thing and then i'm assuming it's gonna gear into the finale so before that i really do want to do some more of the side stuff in that game um let me know something guys I i'm very torn right now right now i'm trying to react to the the witch uh the fallout uh tv show stuff so let me know if you guys want uh this is excluding that should I go and dive into a Fallout game or should I go and dive into Halo? Halo is something I've kind of wanted to play for a very long time. Um, and it's kind of crazy. I played Mass Effect before Halo. I do have all the games because a friend did buy me the collection. So if Halo is something you guys are into or interested in, let me know, man, because I I'd be really down to do that. I'd probably react to some of the trailers like I did for The Witcher 3 and then just dive into the first game. Um, that's probably what I do, but I know Fallout is kind of popping right now, and I've always been interested in Fallout. I just never really got into it. So if that's something you guys be interested in, let me know in the comment section down below. Uh, it really does mean a lot. If you guys would like to uh, check out and get updates early and stuff like that, you can always join the Discord server with the link down below. I usually post about these kind of things if something happened or when to expect a video and stuff like that over there. Uh, but thank you guys so much for watching. My name is Keenan Mace. Remember everyone to play some games, have some fun, and enjoy your day today.